Jim Jordan and Mark Meadows, who led the way for the committee yesterday, said they sent a letter. Now, they uh, first a criminal referral on the one issue, now another one as it relates to the, and going right to the Department of Justice for perjury and knowingly making false statements again. And it, the letter says that Cohn's testimony was a spectacular, brazen attempt to knowing, knowingly and willingly testify falsely and fictitiously to numerous material facts. His testimony included intentionally false statements designed to make himself look better on a national stage. Mr. Cohn's prior conviction for lying to Congress merits a heightened suspicion that he is yet again testified falsely before Congress. Anyway, Jim Jordan is with us. Um, well, for example, the idea that he is a simple thing, like he didn't want to work for the administration. He didn't want a job. There are apparently, I'm told, or a number of text messages that say just the opposite. Yeah, thank you for those kind words. Um, and you're exactly right. Why they would put uh, Michael Cohn on the, on the stand is beyond me. But I do think, and this is why Mark and I sent the letter today to uh, the Attorney General, we do think there were six occasions, and the one that's most significant is the one you just brought up. The idea that he did not want to work at the White House. Even CNN said it was widely known that he was seeking a, 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 a position in, in, in the Trump administration, but uh, was not uh, not given one. So for him to say, no, sir, when we asked him that question, and to deny it time and time again uh, made no sense, and that's why we've sent the letter we have, along with five other, five other situations where we think he said something different than what we know to be fact. Well, what are the other five examples you have? Well, one of them is, is the whole uh, Michael Cohen, women for Cohen, uh, that, that he had nothing to do with that. He paid the firm, and we've, we've heard testimony from or, or got statements from uh, the firm itself that that is is uh, is not accurate. There's the situation you described that, that Mark brought up relative to how he filled out his, his disclosure form and, and, and the whole idea that uh, foreign registration, there's that issue, and a host of others that we think warrant the Attorney General of the United States looking into. And we've got to come back to one basic yeah. thing, too. This guy, we think, in, in so ways, is almost delusional. Remember what he said yesterday in the hearing? He said, Michael Cohen, he said he himself was responsible for, for launching the Trump for President campaign because in 2011 he put together some web website uh, for President Trump. I mean, this is craziness, but they put him on the stand and he said all kinds of things that we think are, again, not well, I, I, where I, I not can, accurate. I, I, listen, I don't want to pile on. Um, I hear you. But honestly, the idea that Michael Cohn thought that that Donald Trump would, had no belief at all that he was going to win or wanted to win and he was viewing this all as one big marketing opportunity... That is so false that yeah. it is, it's beyond recognition, and I'll tell you why. If you ever want to get the president's attention, and during the campaign, you know, well, you're not going to win. If you ever say those words, you got his attention. You bet. Because, you bet. And, and I don't think he would have traveled all of those cities and towns in the final weeks of that campaign fighting that hard to lose. If you wanted exactly to lose, right. you could have you know, done one, one stop a day. No, you're, you're, you're exactly right. Um, I think the Democrats, they didn't care. I mean, what is your, and, and Lanny Davis has responded in saying he testified truthfully before the House Oversight Committee, took full responsibility, he also backed up much of his testimony with documents. But, what, those documents... No, Sean, seem... Sean, you're exactly right. They, they, they were using Michael Cohen. This is step one in their crazy plan to impeach the president. Remember, two fundamental facts. Last week, Tom Steyer, mega donor for the Democrats, organized a town hall in whose district? Jerry Nadler, chairman of the Judiciary Committee. This week, Tom Steyer, mega donor for the Democrats, organizes a town hall where? Baltimore, Maryland, District of Elijah Cummings, chairman of the Oversight Committee, where this hearing took place yesterday. This is step one. They could find no one better. This is the best they could come up with, a guy that's going to prison in two months for lying. But this is how they're going to launch their impeachment, because they got nothing else to go on. So they had to start with a guy, Michael Cohen, who was delusional, who thinks he launched the president's campaign for president seven years ago, eight years ago, whenever he did that. That's what. That's who they used. He was their patsy yesterday, and you're right. It's unfortunate, but they used him, and that's what that, That's what yesterday was all about. Okay, so we had a, a, a view and a ruling that, that politics stops at the water's edge, and I'm looking at the circus, and thankfully you were all there to shed some light on this and and bring a whole other perspective to the hearings yesterday because otherwise it was insane. But it did for a full day. They, they successfully drew a lot of attention away from issues that ah, may be somewhat insignificant, you know, peace and security for the Korean Peninsula, uh, no more threats against the continental United States, Guam, no more rockets being fired over Japan, 
um, remain sent home, hostages freed. And why talk about those things? What if the Republicans did this and it was Obama as president? I mean, you, you, Sean, you're right. Um, the, 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 when the president's trying to make the world a safer plus, place, they're focusing on this kind of this kind of exercise, which was just completely, completely ridiculous. And, and, and we saw that play out uh, yesterday with Mr. Cohen on, on the witness stand. All right, we'll come back. We'll continue from Vietnam. All right, as we continue with our friend uh, Jim Jordan, uh, the congressman from Ohio, who was a rock star yesterday. What did you make of the exchange, uh, which I thought was unbelievable? Now, we know all about... Congresswoman Tlaib and, and, you know, the MF a remark that she made, yeah. uh, some of her radical associations, etc. And uh, I watched this, and then I saw your colleague and friend, Mark Meadows, um, really, I don't think I ever saw him that angry, but he was hiding the, the anger, he was controlled. And then I watched the exchange with him and Elijah Cummings, which I thought was amazing. Yep. Yeah. No, I mean, Sean, you know Mark Meadows. Mark is probably my best friend, certainly my best friend in Congress. And this is one of the most honorable individuals I've ever been around. And for a congresswoman to leave to reference and say things the way she did uh, and go after the character of Mr. Meadows was absolutely wrong. And I think everyone who was in that committee room knew it. Everyone who knows Mark Meadows knew it. Uh, I thought Mark handled it like a, like a gentleman that he is. Um, and and it, it was just flat out wrong. But again, this is where they are today. The left will do all kinds of things that just are not appropriate. Um, I'm glad that the chairman said the things he did about Mark and, and that you got to see the friendship that, that generally exists between those two individuals. No, that was, I thought, and I didn't know about that friendship, uh, and I would assume you probably have a similar relationship to him. Yes, yes. I, I, look, we disagree on policy, but, but uh, I respect Mr. Cummings' Uh, as an individual, obviously, and uh, appreciate him, and we've we've had a good working relationship over the uh, over the who, years. Who made the decision? Who said, "Oh, we'll schedule it this day, or we won't reschedule it," knowing the the high stakes negotiations that are going on in Vietnam with somebody that's well, trying to denuclearize the Korean Peninsula? Well, I mean, ultimately, it's the chairman's call. So ultimately, it was Mr. Cummings' call. I'm sure there was consultation with the Democrat leadership, i.e., uh, Speaker Pelosi. But ultimately, they're called. But remember, they had postponed this once. But I think they got themselves in this situation when you announced this clear back before they took over the Congress. After the election, they announced this. This was their first big hearing. This was their star witness, a guy who is going to prison for four distinct federal crimes, one of which is lying to Congress. That's who you name as your first star witness. I believe he was the first announced witness for the 116th Congress. Their first, their first guy they announced for this whole new Congress. So when you do all that and then schedule it while the President of the United States is overseas working on the extremely important work he was doing relative to North Korea and, as you say, the Korean Peninsula, that, that shows you, again, how committed they are to going after President Trump, much more focused on that than they are on doing what's best for the country. And, again, that's, that's the sad state of affairs we find ourselves. Well, and I think if, you know, if, if this were – the opposite, and this was Barack Obama, and Republicans were acting this way back at home, what would the reaction no, have been? No. I mean, you, you know there's two standards, and this is, again, this is what drives your listeners, your viewers, and the American people crazy, is this double, this whole double standard concept. One set of rules for the Democrats, one set of rules for Republicans, one set of rules for us regular people, a different set if your name is Clinton, or Comey, or Strzok, or Page, or McCabe. The whole different, and it's never supposed to be that in this country. It's supposed to be equal treatment under the law, and it's supposed to be fair and impartial reporting from the press, which we never get. And that's what drives Americans crazy, and that's why they so appreciate this president, because this president is coming here and fighting to do what he told the American people he was going to do. And it's our job, when he's fighting the good fight and getting a raw deal, it's our job to defend him, and that's what we're trying to do as well. Well, again, I say without the Freedom Caucus, what did you think of the president walking away? I'm glad he walked away. Real quick answer. Yeah, it's like Reagan. You walk. Sometimes you have to walk away to get the real deal, to get the best deal, to get what's good for the safety of the United States of America and and, and what's good for the safety of the uh, of the world. And, and uh, I view it just like just like Reagan did. Well, thanks for all you did yesterday, Congressman you Jordan. Thank you, Sean. thank you, and uh, we'll see you 